I feel amazing, super humbled. We started Brink four years ago in 2014, and it's really cool to have this come from the community first off, to let people know, hey, what the work, you know, the work you've been putting your whole life into, all the founders, all the investors, all the effort, that people really are recognizing that, that feels really great. But then also to have this new platform to communicate out to a larger audience and say, hey guys, this is important. Connecting the physical world is a profound step and it's gonna be really, really life-changing for all of us and hopefully more people can hear our message, which is we just wanna unlock data from the physical world so we can improve our lives. And thank you to obviously to Accelerator and IoT Age and everyone for giving us this awesome platform and award. So we owe this entire award and victory to our community. We had a lot of people show up to support us from all over the world. A lot of people, both personal friends and family, as well as the entire Brink kind of extended family. We are very fortunate. We run the world's largest IoT online community. We have a huge network. I think we've supported 500 IoT founders now in four years. So it's all about them. There's no way that we could do our work without everything that they sacrifice. So it's nice that they not only work with us, but then when it comes time to actually kind of put the vote in the ballot box, they actually come out and show up for that too. So it's all about the people that we get to work with every day. So IoT is, in my opinion, a really bad term. So at first I didn't even know what it was. I just saw that there were these wearable devices that were popping up. I was fortunate enough to have some fantastic mentors in the early days, people that invested in Fitbit, they were doing some of the early connected locks, so in San Francisco where I was for 10 years. So I kind of got that early consumer excitement. I was like, oh, this is gonna be massive. And I worked for Apple for six years, so I had a real passion and love of hardware, but I never thought that young startups could do this. I always thought it was the Apples and the Samsungs and all those guys, like and Philips, that they were gonna run that world. So for me, it was more of this moment in time going, okay, this is awesome. So moving to Asia was, you know, to try to tackle that opportunity it wasn't my idea, it was my wife's idea, but it was really this awesome shot going, okay, this trend's happening. I didn't really understand, I don't think any of us truly understand how profound this shift is that's happening right this second every single day. But I knew kind of once we were in it, that this was gonna be probably the biggest thing that's ever happened in our life after the invention of the internet is connecting the entire physical world and our bodies to the internet. And that's when I think I realized, okay, I'm gonna be doing this for probably the rest of my life and that this is work that I really feel like we are meant to be doing. And so I'm really, really lucky and I'm excited every day I get out of bed to start working on, terrible word, IoT, but I actually really love this job. So we primarily are investors. So we do have a lots of service divisions that support our investments. So we have this big community platform with 8,000 IoT companies. We have our accelerators. Now we're about to announce our fifth accelerator. So we do lots of investing. Then we have our manufacturing studio and sourcing studio in China to help make the products and then growth and distribution. But it's all about supporting, getting these early ideas off the ground and giving them a chance to have the largest impact possible because that only happens when you get those products either into the hands or the wrists of a lot of people, or you get it installed through these massive B2B partnerships, which at this conference, you see so many of the big names are here, Cisco and Bosch and Huawei, and all of them are doing amazing work to kind of build the foundation. And I always tell this to our founders that you need to be paying attention to what these big guys are doing and partnering and connecting as best you can, because we're building on their shoulders. Like a startup is not gonna build 5G, right? Like it's not gonna happen. So you need to look at how to connect those two dots, both early stage innovation and startups with large corporates, governments, because without both, you can't do this. You can't actually have the impact you want because you're not getting to a scale to touch more than maybe 50 people in your neighborhood or 500 people in your you know, direct network versus the 5 billion people or 7 billion people that we should be helping out. The number one takeaway I always kind of bring this back to is the human element. Now I know that it's really important that we connect every object and every box so we know where everything is. Of course, it's gonna save money, increase the efficiency of our world. But I think a lot of people miss how human this really is. So we have four themes that we focus on in our investments. It's how we feel, so medical, wellness, health technologies, what we eat, so agricultural technologies, the food supply, 
where we live, smart, safe cities, and how we move, drones, final mile, transportation, et cetera. And I look at that framing as a way to help everyone think about why are we doing this? Because just putting a sensor in something or hooking up to the internet isn't the value. But I think it's kind of hard to argue now that the cat's out of the bag, that if you get all the data out with the advancements of machine learning and artificial intelligence, we are fundamentally solving almost every human problem. Most of them we created, but we were able to fundamentally solve almost every single problem on Earth. So I always try to tell people, like, let's bring it back to the why, because we get really stuck on like the speeds and the feeds and all the specs and kind of stuff and the widgets. And it never has mattered, it never will matter. I always tell people I worked at Apple six years and I said, look, I love my Apple Watch, but I'll never care what's in it. It's all about the value you get and what these technologies can do to help improve our lives. So I hope we can have that conversation more because I think it'll A, humanize it and then bring more people into the conversation and maybe it help governments and corporate leaders to kind of realize they need to get into this now because I think they're going a little bit slower than they could and we're actually leaving a lot of problems and, and solutions on the table that can really help people now. The event's been awesome, so I came here last year too. So thanks for having me back for a second year. Um, it's way bigger this year, so I think I was talking to Zach and he said like 5,000 people or something crazy showed up, like way more than we thought. Um, also, I really love the level. Like this is one of my favorite parts about coming to the corporate side versus all the startup tech shows that I go to, is you're able to see sort of long tail innovation, which you know small startups can't do. So I think it's really important to look at both sides. So I'm always impressed at your conference when I see what the big guys are doing. Again, I have to always be looking for our, where our investments can actually play and where they need to partner. So I think big, way more people than anticipated, and also just really inspiring to see how the big guys are bringing innovation today, which is sometimes you kind of get stuck in these long cycles, but they're here to actually present what you can do with it today and actually help the world. Big, inspiring, and future. I'm not gonna say what the future, but it's important to be at a show like this to see what's coming.